Welcome back to the Augustana Observer Podcast. I am your host, Chris Ray, and on this week's episode, I am joined by Augie faculty member and public relations instructor, Doug Shop, who is also the director of the Edge Center here on campus. How are you doing this morning, Doug? I'm doing good this morning. It's nice to be with you. Uh, we're going to dive into um, Doug's journey here at Augie and how he's made an impact on the Augustana campus and what he exactly does at Edge Center and the resources that um, they have to offer mm-hmm. that some students may not really know about here on campus. Yeah, that's a big topic. Um. <laughs> because I know that this year was like, you know, I, did, I just met you this year, and I didn't really know that Ed Center had all those resources, like, regularly yeah. available. We, we hear that a lot. And, you know, we meet a lot of people, like, senior year, and they're like, wow, I should have been in here from the time I was a freshman. Um, this year, actually, we've got a fair amount of freshmen that are in there, probably more than I've ever had. In the past, so that's pretty cool. So I'm pretty excited about that. But no matter when somebody comes in, there's there's opportunities to learn, um, you know. And people take those experiences. I mean, I mean, I even think like the history of it. I had a student, um, and actually, you just heard from her in class um, that wandered in her senior year, and it was wasn't even the beginning of her senior year, and she wanted to write a business plan. She had an idea to open up a dance studio, and. Um, not only did she write a business plan, she learned a little graphic design. Um, she, if you asked her, she would tell you she met her best friends in there in her senior year. And it wasn't like she was hidden away in her room for three years. Mm-hmm. She was like, she was running dance company on campus. So she was super active on campus. Yeah. I think she came in and kind of like found those kindred souls, those people like her that, you know, wanted to go out there and achieve something and, and make a difference. Sure. And I think that's one thing that, as I, you know, talk to you this term, um, hearing those stories and those um, almost it's almost like human interest stories about how you've um, how you've interacted with students and how they still they still come back to you and you know let you know how they're doing after yeah. after college. Yeah, absolutely. There's a network of them. Um, Andy Shearhouse, who's the assistant director in the office, he started this past year, and maybe COVID. This we can thank COVID for a few things. He started to do uh, virtual meetups mm. um, for for edge alumni, for edge kids, as they sometimes called themselves. Huh. For a while, they were Doug's kids. Now they're edge kids. I kind of like the fact that they're edge kids, but um, they are kind of my kids, though, too. Um, <laughs> and sometimes, you know, 15 to 30 people will show up for a virtual kind of meetup. And especially during COVID, a couple of people are like, not sure my job's going to continue. What are you doing? And people be like, hey, we're hiring. We got a perfect spot for you. And, you know, it's really kind of cool that, you know, people are out there kind of working it. And and I get calls from students, from former students. Um, I think one in particular for, you know, she graduated probably 20 years ago. And I still get calls from her if she's contemplating like a job, especially job moves and, and stuff like that. Um, I'm happy to have those conversations. Yeah. It's kind of cool to hear what the, what people are doing. And I think taking I'm taking the um, public relations class with you, and I think that that class, most of these students, I feel like took that class with you. Like that yeah. was a huge good good chunk of them. Huge yeah. stepping stone. And um, you know how mm-hmm. how did you come about becoming a professor here on campus? You know, you said you've mm-hmm. talked a little bit about your past and you know, working for um, automobile. Yeah, right? I was a general manager at the largest privately owned car dealership in the U.S. Yeah. So I, w- I was working a 90-hour work week. Um, good business. You make big money. I met the former college president um, a number of years before I came to work here, uh, Tom Treadway, and he was a car guy. Mm-hmm. And so I sold him a four-wheel drive Nissan truck was the first thing. And um, he and I just hit it off. He liked cars, and, um, you know, we had different things in common, and he sometimes would, he often would come in to buy a car, but as soon as he'd come in, we'd just chat about cars and things like that. And um, probably three years before I came here, he started to try to recruit me. He's, you know, basically he said, I can't pay you but a fraction of what you make, yeah. but someday that might not, you know, the money might not be as important. That day came. He was right. <laughs> um, so I really, I came here to fix the school's marketing and sales issues 29 years ago. And um, we made and made a big difference within a couple of years. We really kind of turned numbers around. And um, internet was new at the time, and so I started to look at like websites. Um, and at that same about that same time, um, communication studies 
came into my boss's office and said, hey, you've got a guy in there that's a marketing guy and we don't have anybody to teach public relations this year. Do you think he'd teach it for us? And my boss at the time here on campus said, go ask him. It's up to him if he wants to do it. And um, So that's that's really what happened. And it was David Snowball was the professor that walked into my office all those years ago. And, and I'm like, um, sure. So I studied public relations. And for me, it was... That was a life changer for me as a marketing salesperson because public relations brought a structure um, Mm -hmm. to the stuff I'd been doing for all those years. And I think the quantitative person in me likes that structure piece kind of overlaid on just being a creative person and and thinking about, hey, what kind of um, advertisement do I need to run in the newspaper to sell cars? Um, It gave me a, a discipline. It's almost like a science behind it. That... It really is. And in that, that outline that you're learning in class, that four-step yeah. process, that never changes. Mm-hmm. How we do stuff, media has completely changed. I mean, yeah, media sure. 25 years ago and media today, are, there's very little that's similar. So how we do our messaging and stuff is different. But um, certainly that that strategy part, that'll, that'll never change in your whole career. Mm-hmm. You'll go back to that and reason I still teach that class is that's the class where I get students that contact me many years later and be like, that's that class made all the difference. You know, looking back at, you know, before you knew, you didn't know you were going to be here for this long. I feel like you said you're only, you only thought this was mm-hmm. just going to be kind of like a, a rest stop kind of thing. It's yeah. Just a couple years. It was supposed to be a three year thing yeah. and I was going to be gone. Yeah. Looking <laughs> back, like what, what was the thing, what was the, the factor that made you stay and made you really, you know, make a home here at Augustana? Yeah, I think the fact, as soon as I got to start to work with students, um, I was like, that's why people do this. Mm-hmm. This is pretty cool. I get to make a difference. And and the students that have been typically attracted, like, to EDGE, even, like, the PR class, they tend to be students that have a little bit more drive, um, students that want to, like, learn stuff outside of class, I mean, face it, a lazy student walks into Edge and they're there once and they're like, this is extra work I'm not getting credit for. And they just never come back. Mm-hmm. Um, and we didn't, that's not what the Edge Center's not designed for them. It really isn't. It's for the people that are like, wow, I can come in here and, and have fun and learn stuff that might help me get a job someday mm-hmm. or might help shape my career. And my PR class is the same way. And that's why, you know, I continue to teach that. It's a lot of work for me. It's a lot of work for you as a student. Sure. Um, yep. I get, uh, on the evals at the end, I get hardest class I've ever taken, but I usually get best class I've ever taken yeah. on the same evals. Um, but yeah, I have to, I have to, all that stuff you write, I have to read. Um. <laughs> what I think, what I think is one of the best mm-hmm. ways that you teach the class is that you treat us like, you treat the class like it's a job kind of a thing. And you, you kind of respect, you respect us, but you also, you expect us to respect you and you treat us, you treat treat us like we're I don't want to say we're employees but you mm. you treat it like you know it's a job and you know yeah that's the way that you know after college when we find find jobs after after college you're teaching us that that dynamic about how you you know you're not going to lay everything out like a employer is not going to lay everything mm-hmm. out to you and you know give you an outline for assignments and stuff you have to really you know grind that out yourselves and I think that's almost like a life skill that you're putting yeah. into the course itself. Yeah, I designed the class how I'd want it to be taught to me. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's much more like a really good grad school class. Um, but certainly, and I talk to people that were that work in the industry, and they help shape it. Students have helped shape that class over the years. I mean, student feedback super, super important in that that class. So the, every project we do has a particular purpose and a... Mm-hmm kind of a milestone to move people along. Yeah, I don't micromanage you. I hate micromanagers. Hmm. Um, and I don't manage that way. I did at one point in my life, and it's impossible to manage 100 employees. Um, so you have to, like, you have to empower people. You have to say, you're responsible. In this case, you're a student, but if it's an employee, it's the same thing. Here's what you're responsible to get done. I'm going to expect that you can get it done. If you have questions, you need to come and ask me. Otherwise... You need to get it done. In the work world, you get fired. Um, it's a different F thing that happens as a student. Um, if you don't get the work done, you fail the class. So, mm-hmm. um, 
you know, I'd rather have students kind of learn that here and, and go through it. I, you know, yeah, it's, and it's good in people that I think most students would rather manage themselves, right? Here's the expectations, manage yourself, get stuff done. And even if there is this student who, who has been used to, you know, been giving the, the, you know, the guidelines for certain assignments, it's about <clears throat> adapting to that, that style because like I said, like, that's not what's going to be like after, after yeah. college. No boss has ever walked yeah. into my office and given me a, a fully laid out written yeah. project to work on. It just never happens that way. And I think that's kind of what, you know, the Edge Center is doing here at Augustana as well, because the August or the, the Edge Center isn't seeking you out. You kind of come in, see the resources, and it's up to you if you want to use those resources to your advantage. You know, you mentioned, you know, some students coming in, uh, maybe stop by for a few days, but it's really like the go-getters and the ones who you really want to use those resources and you know, take advantage of it. Yeah, that's just it. And you kind of choose your own path. Um, like that book, right? Where you get to make your own choice and you, um, but the edge center, there's so much stuff in the edge center. Nobody can do it all. Mm -hmm. I've had a few students over the years, especially in the last six, seven years, Mm -hmm. give it a good shot. Um, people that I met before they were ever students here that came in and were like, I do everything in edge I can. Mm -hmm. Um, if you can, even they probably maybe got to do half of the things in the edge center. We've got the web guild, um, so they run a web business out of my office since 1998, big web, big, big web, uh, host, uh, company, um, the ad advertising competition group. Um, they've been around 2002 was their first competition. Now there's her campus. There's the Enactus group working on a marketing campaign for cool QC. Um, and then there's all the other stuff we just call edge center stuff. I mean, we run an international conference out of that office. You might not even know that yet. I don't know if you've I, run into I kind my... of heard a little bit. You talking with Andy in there. But... Yeah. Um, I mean, I have event planners. We, we run a conference for three to 400 people come from all over the world. It's in a different location every year. Did you ever, <laughs> you know, the, your first few, year, few years here, did you ever foresee this becoming such a huge, you know, thing here at like Badge Center? Did you yeah. ever envision that or? No, no, not at all. Yeah. Um, you know, I had a full-time job on campus. I was still doing, you know, working in marketing communication. I was teaching, you know, one to three classes a year just because I enjoyed it. Um, mm-hmm. Only for that reason. It wasn't like I had to do that for my job. But I had these two student groups. I had the the web group that was started by a pre-med major, mm-hmm. and they started running that business in 98. So I had that student group always kind of like working on stuff, and they were bringing in revenue so they could buy their own cool computers and have snacks in the cabinets and buy t-shirts and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> and then the ads group, um, the student that started that, um, she's gone on to an interesting career. She's an animation supervisor at Disney. Um, and she's worked on like Frozen and Moana and both Wreck-It Ralphs and stuff like that. And what, what year was she? When, when... So she gra- Julie graduated in 2002. Okay. So Julie Boehner, if you go to IMBD and look up Julie Boehner, you'll see... Oh, really? Oh, yeah. She's got a big <laughs> listing on IMBD. Um, so her, her story was interesting. I mean, she came to me, somebody sent her to me, and she said, I'm interested in a, a, an advertising marketing group. And somebody said you'd be my guy and I went yeah I'm 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 your guy that's interesting and she had already looked at a number of different professional organizations she said this one has a competition I'm going to do this because it's competition we and I don't want it tied to an academic department because I have friends that aren't business majors that would like to do this it should be open to all students from all majors mm-hmm. um and what a great choice that was and we get students from all majors in any year students can do it starting their freshman year so um, Julie graduated when she graduated. We had just done our first competition. Our first client was Bank of America Investment Services. So not even Bank of America specifically, but their investment service division, which is yeah. huge. Um, so they had to learn finance and everything to be able to write a strategic marketing plan for them. So she, like a number of students from the ads group that year, uh, some of them left to go do a uh, jet program. seemed like it was either jet program or they were going to work for a company called Newell Rubbermaid. Newell Rubbermaid's a big consumer products company. They have a lot of different divisions. Mm-hmm. And um, Julie was in the division that manufactured mini blinds. Mm-hmm. So her job was to call on, I don't remember, if it was like six or eight Lowe's stores actually right in this region. And she, within like a month or two, she's like, I hate this. 
And she was making huge money. Newell Rubbermaid, I mean, these students were starting at like sixty to $80,000 a year. This is in 2002. It'd be great money today, let alone go back 20 years, right? Sure. Um, she hated her job. <laughs> so she quit her job. She actually took a job at the local Lowe's store here, working in their paint and mini blind department. She said she made almost the same kind of money monthly because uh, they get paid on commission for the mini blinds. And she knew mini blinds so well she could mm-hmm. sell mini blinds like crazy. <laughs> then she went to grad school in Chicago for film management. So not the artsy end of film. I've had students do that. That one seems to be harder to find a career afterwards. But she was in the management end. She moved to California, um, did an internship um, out in L.A. Her internship was coming to an end. Um, a guy wandered in and, and said, hey, is anybody looking for another internship? And she's like, well, I'm already here. So, um, so it was a TV show. And that was going to be unpaid as well. But within like the first two weeks, their prop person quit. So she got mm-hmm. to be the props manager for a television show for wow. six months. Then she went to work for Nickelodeon and Legal, fell in love with animation, and then moved to Disney. Um, she and has worked on all these cool films. So, yeah, I mean, you just never know. I mean, it wasn't on her radar. Exactly. It's like I had a student that, that ran the Web Guild, um, and she... She was a math education major. She thought she was going to be a high school math teacher the rest of her life. And her sister had gone to school here, too, and had hung out with me. Her sister was an English major. Okay. And back, and so her sister actually worked on the Augustana website back when students and I wrote all the content for the website, and we managed the website. Um, so the older sister goes off to grad school, and her younger sister's graduating about the same time her, the older one's getting done with grad school. And the other one in library science, they both get recruited by, I'm supposed to say, I think, a Department of Defense agency with a campus near Baltimore. Hmm. It's a really cool, pretty um, pretty high-level um, national security kind of positions that they have. I mean, who knows, right? She, when she graduated, she still thought she was going to be a math teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, so people, students' careers go on and they're... You just you kind of never know where you're where you're going to end up. Very similar to what happened with with you. I mean, you, yeah. you didn't think this would become what it is, and staying at Augustana for so long, you know, it's just another example of. Yeah, my mentor when I was your age um, was a partner at one of the big six accounting firms, okay. and that was what my path was probably going to be. Uh-huh. Um, I finished that accounting degree, and I just didn't love it, um, and I was really more interested in cost accounting, which is with uh, like the factories and stuff, cost accountants go in and use data to actually make decisions on like how things run. Um, and right when I graduated was when all the tractor factories were closing up in the mm-hmm. Quad Cities. So, and I had a perfectly good job in retail. I was working in the grocery business and um, I made big money. I'm like, well, why would I go to work as an accountant for half the money? This exactly. Is, be, so you just never know where it's going to take you. So what you do for a degree and what you end up doing for a career for many, many of us, are completely different, right? Exactly. And I think mm-hmm. that's one thing that, um, you know, underclassmen and people coming into school, they really they really take the time to think about what their major is going to be. But at the end of the day, like, your major, it's important, like, what you choose, but there's so many things you can do with those majors, and there's so many different avenues you can, you can take. And it's not the end of the world, you know, if you choose, you know... Mm-hmm. You can't really make a mistake choosing your major. There's always going to be an opportunity yeah. for you. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, I mean, sometimes people pick on, like, different majors, like, in humanities and stuff like that. And it's like, go look at what the what the what most of the CEOs graduated with degrees in, like, the Fortune 100 companies. Yeah. And it's like, most of them are not anything that you'd expect to find. Mm-hmm. It's not like they're all, like, business and accounting degrees. Yeah. Um, actually, I think history at one time was the most common major um, for CEOs of Fortune 100s, yeah. <laughs> so I just, I just think it's very interesting that, that you have such a good relationship with some of those alumni, and I think it's really good to bring, you know, um, you know recognition to that, that professors here on the Augustana campus that really care about the students, and um, I think some people just need to hear that. Even, even professors, you know, anybody on campus hearing those stories and that professors mm-hmm. and their students really, you know, connect here at Augustana, and network um, 
for after college. I think that's something really cool to to hear. Yeah, absolutely. It's a and it's a it's a privilege to get to do it from my standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I just had one of my former students call me on the way um, while I was driving to work. She knows what time I leave my house for work. <laughs> she knows she can call me, and she's contemplating a job move. Um, so she's been calling me in the mornings on my way to work and she's on her way to work and we both have cars that, you know, have that kind of phone. Right. Uh-huh. Or, um, so yeah, we had a conversation and, um, yeah, it's nice to have those relationships and be able to help people, um, along. I mean, so you take advantage of the fact that, you know, I've been around a long time, mm-hmm. so I've gone through many of these things. I've had to make some of those same decisions, um, so do you have somebody you can call and go, hey, you know, I'm thinking about changing jobs and I'm not sure this is a good idea, but here's what mm-hmm. I'm looking at. I'm looking at going from like corporate, in her case, from corporate to maybe to a not-for-profit, um, you know, and it's a completely, it'll completely change your career path, but she she doesn't like what she does. And you know, she's at a big company, she's pigeonholed into, a, you know, she's only doing certain tasks every day, she's being micromanaged. Mm-hmm. Um she was used to Edge Center, where she kind of got to manage herself. And she was a leader in, in the Edge Center. So she really made stuff happen on a regular basis. And she's kind of looking for that same experience. And mm-hmm. at a small not-for-profit, she may well get to do that. Because small not-for-profits, they don't have a lot of uh, personnel. <laughs> and also, a lot of times, those jobs are interesting for students that are looking for that balance in their life, where they're like, well, actually, I'm not... I'm not going to just be like writing copy for brochures. I'm going to be doing everything. I'm going to be writing grants. I'm going to be doing all their marketing, all their social media. I'm going to be running all the events there. I'm going to, yeah, for a lot of students, there's a lot of value to having a job like that where you get to touch a lot of pieces of it. And you really have to figure it out for yourself and you have to be that independent, independent worker. Kind yeah, of thing. I think for a lot of my students that have gone on to like that kind of a thing, Another one, I was actually, it was her birthday yesterday, and I was texting with her. Um, she she worked for, she did event planning. She did a ton of stuff in, in uh, Edge, um, ads all four years and event planning and stuff. And she went on and worked for a big event company up in the Chicagoland area. And she did that for two or three years, and she was like, really missed the marketing stuff. Um, and she went to work for a not-for-profit where she gets to do a ton of things again. Uh, about six weeks ago... She was trying to figure out how do you restructure like the entire employee structure of this not-for-profit organization. They have a new chief executive officer, and the two of them were like, we need to rethink everybody's job. Mm-hmm. Um, so she had contacted me to say, hey, do you have experience this? How do I do it? Guess what I told her? Four-step process. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I emailed her back and went, okay, I hate to say it, but it's the four-step process. It's just taking that structure and taking it to a to reorganization to to reorganizing um, all the jobs and stuff. It's the same kind of stuff. You do your research. You kind of go through the same steps. Mm-hmm. You know, it was funny. My email back was like, oh yeah, I should have known. It's the four-step process. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you, Doug, for your time today and um, this week's episode of the Augustine Observer Podcast. We just spoke with Doug. And he's a a public relations instructor here on campus. He's also the director of the Edge Center. Um, I really thank you, Doug, for sharing those stories with the uh, the community. And um, make sure you say hello to Doug in the Edge Center. Stop by. Yeah, stop by and say hi. Just poke your head in the door and get involved. All it takes is, you know, know, one conversation. (laughs) Doug will pull you in. Andy will pull you in. And um, really take advantage of those resources here on campus. Until next time, I am your host, Chris Ray. And I will see you on the next episode of the Augustana Observer Podcast. Thank you.